Hey YouTubies, how's it going? It's been a couple days and I wanted to come on here to uh, talk about a documentary that I watched. Unfortunately, last night I could not go to sleep to save my life and it's probably because I slept all day long, um, which I hate it. And um, up early this morning at four, um, I was trying to catch um, a, do uh, a documentary on PBS um, about the meteor strike that happened over in Russia um, last month, but let's see what that is. Some kind of spot there. Um, but um, I ended up watching the Tavis Smiley report, and the name of that particular um, documentary was called "Education Under Arrest," and it was very, very engaging. And the reason um, why I decided to come on today is because I just saw a Facebook post that read um, out of every no for every one black man that is incarcerated four black men go to college and the person who posted it said that they were um, surprised at that statistic and I felt that that statistic is probably skewed um, well and just based on other things that I've seen or read or heard, I, I kind of just don't believe that number. I want to, trust me I do, but I kind of don't. And by looking at this documentary about um, education under arrest, Tavis Smiley highlighted how children today are going directly from school to the juvenile system. And oftentimes the schools are just throwing these kids out by way of suspension or whatever have you, whatever you call that. They're throwing these kids out and these kids aren't going anywhere else, they're going home. And when they go home, they go to the streets. And when they go to the streets, they end up doing crime. And when they do crime, they end up where? In jail. And they were showing how these children come to jail with a tremendous amount of baggage and issues that they're trying to deal with at home but can't quite get a handle on and on top of that they're trying to handle school and how to be social with other children it was very it was very provocating it was very eye-opening uh, to see this report because it's scary there is one judge, I believe they were in St. Louis, there's one judge who was an appointed judge and um, since he was an appointed judge, he decided he didn't have to enforce the law the way that it was written back in 1988, which I didn't even know. Back in 1988, they changed the law for schools whereas children now are being thrown into the penal system or you know being thrown into the the criminal system or the, the justice system and they're no longer graduating from school they change the laws on how how old you have to be to drop out and all this other crap and now kids are being kicked out of school and they don't have anywhere else to go well this particular judge decided to legislate or not basically legislate because he's a judge but he decided to interpret the law a little bit differently than, than his elected counterparts by not sending these children to jail. He sentenced them to school. And he actually funded or founded a charter school, which is an alternative school where these kids were sentenced to. And during their time there, during their tenure there, they're getting the skills that they need. He had a chess club. He had a boxing club. He had gym that's open after hours so that they don't have to go home and be on the street. They have something to do after school. I thought that was beautiful. And Tevis Smiley was asking these children, you know, how did they end up in there? And how did they end up in jail? And how many times, you know, these kids are going 10, 20, you know, times in and out, in and out because they can't handle it. They don't have the skills to handle everyday life out on the street. And how, how could they? They're children. I know when I was growing up, which wasn't that long ago, it was in the 80s, 
when I was growing up, uh, it, it truly was the village mentality. Everybody on my street had free reign to, um, to, to put, you know, down some discipline on the kids on our block. If, if, if one lady across the street, if she saw somebody doing something they wasn't supposed to do, she got at you, period. And, and when your mom came out, you, you know, she talked to your mom and then your mom got at you. That's just how it went. We had like three and four and five different mommies on the block. I know my mom, uh, my mom liked to cook. So my mom cooked um, a home cooked meal every day. We didn't eat out. We, we ate cooked meals every day. And for any child on the block who didn't get that, they can come to our house. And my mom will cook every day. And we had one, you know, one kid who came to our house almost every day, you know, to eat because he wasn't getting that at home. And my mom didn't blink. She didn't think, you know, twice about that. But, you know, <laughs> it's funny because I'm laughing now because there's one guy that I grew up with. He always came to our house for Kool-Aid. He would knock on the door. He sounded like bro man from the fifth floor. And he would knock on the door and be like, y'all got some Kool-Aid. <laughs> we would say, man, go. Well, <laughs> he come over there for some Kool-Aid, you know. That's just how we grew up, and not not very often that we get to eat. Me and my sister get to eat at somebody else's house because my mom didn't play that. But it, you know, everyone on the block, every adult on the block, every parent on the block had you know some say so about what was going on on the block, and that's just how it was, you know. And we went to school. That's just how it was. I went to school, I didn't think twice about not going to school or not doing homework or this, that, and the other. And I'm a little bit of a nerd, so that just might be me. Um, but I, you know, but I fell off. I did um, skip school in the 10th grade. I skipped almost my whole 10th grade, grade year down the drain. But I brought it back. I brought it back and still graduated on time with honors. So, I mean, it's just a different time. And we have to become a little bit more patient with our children. And it's it's sad to say, I'm, I thank God that my child, who is 17 now and a junior in high school, he didn't end up in that, in the system uh, per se. But he had been kicked out a bunch of times. And I blame that on this food that they are giving us this milk this chicken you know pumped with crap antibiotics and hormones you know, these kids they claim these kids got ADD it is not it's not that it's not that I bet you any child you know that they say have ADD is a picky eater I bet you if you survey most of the children that you know with ADD I guarantee you they are a picky eater and what I mean by picky I mean extremely finicky they eat probably french fries pizza hot dogs and noodles and that is it it's a, it's a nutritional deficiency and I think it's coming from the food that they're giving us in the stores that's where I think that's where it's coming from and they tried to pin my kid in that same thing and I said no no hell to the no my son don't have ADD and I, I put him on medication for a short time and he came to me and said mom I don't like the way this makes me feel and I said sweet pie then throw him away throw him away because that's not that's not the answer the answer is not just locking these kids up or popping a pill with them you have to number one I say double up on the vitamins double up on them because if they're if they're nutritionally nutritionally deficient from not eating food period and the vitamin is supposed to be a supplement you need to double up if it says one give them two because they're not getting the nutrients that they have and how can you concentrate in class when you haven't eaten because you don't eat this and you don't eat that how can you and these children you know you you have kids especially i say a lot of the 80s babies you know, you have Oh, that's that's pretty cool. See it in and say a Florida and plantation. Get out. That's not too far for me. 
in Plantation, Florida. They a group of uh, an office pool won the one million dollars in Powerball, and they decided to share it with the new worker who just came. So that's awesome. Hmm. Right down there in Plantation, got to be more careful. Anywho. Anywho, these children need nutritional uh, supplementation and they need the time. They need the time and the mentorship of us today, especially young black men. In the report, there was, they talked about uh, New Orleans and how after the hurricane a lot of the public schools closed down and these charter schools took over and the charter schools don't want to deal with those children so they just kick them out and one kid he said Tavis asked him he said well where did you go after they kicked you out he said I went home that's it and the judge made a very good point children never stop learning you send them to jail they'll learn how to load an automatic weapon they'll learn how to cook up some crack they'll learn how to uh, shoot dice and gamble they'll learn how to burglarize the next home that they get into when they get out they'll learn how to do a lot of stuff because they don't stop learning so would you rather have them in jail learning criminal ways or would you rather have them in school learning there he made a he made it very plain very plain to me and this kid in new orleans said he just went home he said he went to the streets that's all he could do that's all he can do and there are some students there from tulane university some law students who are advocating for these children in the juvenile system and stepping up and being mentors to these children and getting them back in school and getting them back on the right track and while his report did highlight a di you know a diverse group of children he did make mention that this is predominantly black youth black young men we need the young men to come back you know if you're a male and you in your 30s you in your 20s and i wouldn't even say 20s if you in your 30s i'm talking to you right now if you in your 30s and you a black man right now watching this YouTube video you need to go out there grab you a young brother and start training them because they need it they need it so bad and sisters if you if you if you in your, in your 30s and you know you doing you doing things you need to grab one of these young ladies and let them know you don't have to gap your legs open and get nothing let them know you don't have to have a baby to keep no man. Let them know that it's hard out here for single mothers. Because a lot of us are have been single mothers. Let them know it's hard out here. It's hard trying to finish school and do this, that, and the other. And go to college and work. And you got to worry about child care, this, that, and the other. It's hard. It's hard out here. Let them know. Me, like I said before, I have a Girl Scout troop. And that is my primary focus. These girls come from homes where there may be some assistance. There may be um, a, a different mentality from what I see should be the norm. And and I I had one little girl, I told you second grade, tell me she wasn't going to college. And she wasn't even going to college because she don't like school. And that second grader, when I was at that cookie booth and I was teaching my girls how to count back change, to the customers who were buying cookies, that second grader came up and caught on so fast to that concept. She was counting that change back so fast. She was doing it on her fingers. She was doing it on her head. And I looked at her, I said, now you telling me you don't want to go to school. I said, is that what you telling me? I said, as good as you are in math, and that's what you telling me? And she said, her mother said the same. Her mother said, she is so smart, but she don't want to apply herself. I looked at her, I said, look, honey, I'm in school. We can do this. We can do this together. We can do it. And she just smiled at me. You know, you got to give them something. You got to give them something. You know, even if it's small, it's, you know, something as small as just teaching them how to count back change. None of them girls knew how to count back change. 
They were so excited to learn that. One girl went home and said, I, and came back the next day at the cookie booth and said, Miss Ayana, I was practicing with my mama last night. I said, you go girl. Because that's a vital skill that they need to have. And running the cookie booth is a vital skill they need to have because they running a business. They made a budget, they ran a business, they, they marketed, you know, they made signs, they marketed, they, they use their people skills, they use their customer service skills, they use their inventory management skills, decision making, they did all of that. All of that. We got to do it. We got to do it out here. And um, if you want to watch that Tavis Smiley documentary, I will post the link below. Uh, it was on PBS. You can go to pbs.org and just type in Tavis Smiley at the search. It was called Education Under Arrest. Um, I implore everybody at the sound of my voice to watch it because children are our future. You know, that is the absolute truth because we were the future for our parents. And look how far we've come. And it just seems like we're backpedaling. You know, they, they won't pull up the pants and it just seems like we're backpedaling and we, we got to do, we have to do something. So I would say get involved, volunteer, be a mentor, big brothers, big sisters, do something, spend more time with your own children. You don't even have to go outside and get nobody else's children. Spend more time with your children. Open up the dialogue at your table. Sit down and have a meal with them. Open up the dialogue and, and talk about the issues that they're going through in school and socially. Talk about those things. Let nothing be off subject. You know, let nothing be taboo and untouched. Whether it's sex, boys, whatever. Let it all flow. Because they're all getting it in out here. It's all coming in and they're being flooded and bombarded. And the only way they can deal with it is by having someone to talk to. Someone that knows that they care. Um, other than that, you know, let, let's keep our youth out of the jails. We have to. We have to. And I know college is not for everybody. I understand that. But at the same time, everybody can't be a business owner either. You know, they, they try to push that in, in our community so much. You know, own your own business. Own, somebody got to work. Somebody got to work. Because if you own your own business, somebody got to work there. You might have to hire somebody. So there are employees. I'm one of them. I don't have to run my own business. I can work at yours and, and run your business. So we we have to do something. So with that said, I'm done. Peace out, YouTubers. Have a good one.